Hi guys and welcome to Steve's Kitchen and welcome to another unboxing video and another Breville. I, I don't know why I've ended up with Breville again. I just did my research. I wanted myself a blender and there's a good number of reasons why I've come up with this one. This is called the Icon 550 Blender. I'll tell you in a moment why I chose it. Now let's get this box open. Just got a cut, there's a couple of little tags on here. I truly haven't opened this. I have obviously looked at it in the shops. So in the top we've got a uh, little instruction booklet. I'm going to have to turn this upside down and take this out. The styrofoam box is inside. So carefully, I've got a, not sure what that is, so I'll look in a moment and tell you. Okay, in the top of the styrofoam we've got one of the things that were very important to me. Now, this is the mixing jug and it is glass. And I'll explain to you why I wanted glass. Now, a lot of the new models are going over to a plastic jug and they tell you the plastic is scratch proof. It's wonderful, made of the latest Bakelite super plastics. But realistically, guys, glass doesn't scratch. Plastic does. You know you get scratch proof glasses, they're always gonna scratch. And there's another big plus with this particular lid and this is the main reason I bought this one. But I'll tell you about that in a moment. Let's finish unpacking it. Just get the, the base out of the box. Get rid of this polystyrene. Now it's wrapped in a protective plastic. And that is the base. It's pretty simple. As with a lot of the Breville products, people find it quite nifty. There's uh, on the, the plug here, you've got a little hook for pulling the plug out, and that's quite good. It's a stainless steel, a brushed stainless steel body. As well as having that nifty little plug, it's got a, a wind-up coil on the bottom, so you've got quite an extension. Let's look how long this cable is. Yeah, it's quite a decent length of, of cable on there, which is, which is another nice feature. A lot of the Brevels are like that. They, have, uh, they don't skimp on, on the cable. And another really great thing about this particular mixer is, look, popping it on the base. It doesn't matter which way round you put the jug, it falls. A lot of them will only go on in one position. I think that's a great little feature from Breville, so well done to Breville for that. And the really, really big selling point for this mixer is this big wide open mouth. And down the bottom there, it's a bowl shaped base. Now most of these mixers, they have a tapered bottom. and. I'll explain, actually, there's a picture on the box that explains this really well. Now, if you can see that, on the, uh, the left or the right, the bowl-shaped one is, is the Breville... Uh, the bowl-shaped one is the Breville mixer, and that is the standard style on the other side, which most of the blenders have. And they always clog up. So that, that's my old uh, blender. And one of the things, it didn't matter what you put into this, and I've seen this, the square ones as well that, uh, that they sell in the shops now. They, they tend to have this sort of area at the bottom where fruit or, or solids sit and it doesn't lift. So you can imagine with the base of this one, you've got this lovely sort of domed bottom to it. And also you've got six blades in there and there's a, a blade that actually runs around the shape of the dome in the bottom. I don't know if I can show you that better when I disassemble it. Now this bag I had with a little tool inside, I'm going to open it up. I haven't got a clue what it is yet, so I'll have a little read and come back to you. Another little point I wanted to show you is on the bottom, on the bottom of the jug here, where it engages with the mixer, there's this lovely little chrome or stainless steel locking nut. Very smooth, it's got a multiple serrated edge. Now normally a lot of them are plastic and they're going to wear really quickly. This is ideal. Now I'm used to these jug bottoms just like twisting and coming off, but because of the bowl design, in here you've got like a, a little four finger grip and you unscrew, actually it's the opposite direction because it doesn't want to undo while you're blending, uh, unscrew this inside unit and the blades come out like that. And this is completely dishwasher proof, so it's, and it's very easy just to rinse under the tap. But you can see it's got this sort of bowl shape, and the inside here there's a little seal, and the inside of the glass meets nicely with the bottom of that bowl. This piece does not come off, so this whole thing can go into the sink and wash or, or uh, into a dishwasher, but it's very easy to clean. 
It's got a, uh, a lid like you'd expect, a uh, rubber sealed lid. This little pull unit here is something you see on the top of a lot of Breville appliances. And you can untwist that little centerpiece and you get access to the mixer if you want to put things in while the, while the lid is still on. Okay, so we've got a little power on button here on the side and a little red light comes on. Then you've got the pulse setting, you've got a puree setting, uh, liquefy, blend, chop and mix. Now somebody has said to me this is quite quiet, let's have a little listen to it on, on the mix. Yeah, and that, that certainly is quite quiet. Well that certainly is quite quiet and it says equipped with a motor overload protection. Now chop, number two, a little bit faster and it goes right the way around to the puree which is very fast and then we've got a pulse button here at the end which is just, you can press it. Now I'm not sure about these touch pad numbers, I'm not sure how well that's going to last or whether they'll split in the end but uh, anyway. It's not a badly priced blender. Certainly you can get these for probably around about the $100 mark. Now if I let this rev up to its full speed on the, on the puree button, number five. You can see that's quite a bit louder. Now here's a little tip I want to add at the end. When I was putting this uh, rubber seal back on and tightening it into the unit. It was leaking and I couldn't work out why. I thought it was something I was doing wrong and it is. You've actually, this red band here, you've actually got to push it round. So you just seal it all the way around the unit. So nice and snug like that before you screw it in and then the red seal will stay nice and tight. So you line these two little notches here, there's one either side, line it up with the slots in the bottom, the bottom of the base and turn it anti-clockwise, very simply, and tighten it up. Now this tool here will actually just, there's a couple of little guides in there, and just tighten it slightly with this tool. Now I wouldn't over tighten it, that should be enough. Now I thought I'd give you just a little demonstration with plain water. Now as I say, subscribe to the channel if you want to see recipes. But I've put some water in there and the great thing is it's got these very clear measurements on both sides of the jug. And I'll just pop that on. Now that's on the low spin and that will go for two minutes and it stops. Obviously I won't uh, bore you with that. So that's my first blending video. Not a very interesting mix, glass of fully blended water. <laughs> so there you have it guys, that is the Breville Icon 550. Now I believe in the US that they do a 550XL, which means it's probably got a slightly larger glass container on the top. Now I've just read in the manual also that when you press any of these uh, preset buttons down here, it will run for two minutes, 120 seconds, and then stop by itself. So that's quite good if you want to just set it and go off and do something. So like I said to you before, fix any way you like, or the four directional, and look out for the Breville Icon 5500 coming up soon in Steve's kitchen. Be good, see you in the next video.